Uh, he's now also an incredibly successful author. He's into gaming, etc. So without further ado, it was down to amaze and entertain you. The fabulous Mr. Will Wheaton. Tempting to say, I, uh, I'm, I'm delighted for, for this to be uh, video and audio recorded. However, I ask that any video that you do place in any uh, online environment be released under a Creative Commons attribution non-commercial license. Uh, if you don't know what that means, find the nearest nerd and uh, <laughs> be able to explain it. Um, I, uh, I normally, when I when I do a when I when I come to a con, I normally do a, a, I spend most of the time performing uh, the material that I've written. But uh, because I haven't been to Toronto in Mumblecoff years, I thought that <laughs> it was probably a good idea to just uh, tell you a couple of very short stories. Um, about uh, my wonderful wife, who is the brains of our relationship and, uh, and the better half of Team Wheaton, and then also share with you a little uh, excerpt from my book, Memories of the Future, which is a sort of a snarky look back at the first season of Star Trek The Next Generation. <laughs> and then I would be delighted to take any questions that you have. Um, so before I get started, how many people in this room watch my show Table Talk? How many of you have seen the Ticket to Ride episode? <laughs> See, you know, all you people who aren't holding up your hands? We're all in on a thing that you're not in on. <laughs> Very disappointing. Um, a lot of people, because of this, for those of you who don't know what it is, Tabletop is a show that Felicia Day and I co-created, and it airs on her Geek and Sundry YouTube channel, which is at youtube.com slash geekandsundry. Tabletop uh, comes out every other Friday with a new episode, and uh, the idea was to take everything that I loved about Jon Favreau's show, Dinner for Five, where he would sit down with people that he had worked with in the film industry, and people who had interesting stories to tell, and talk to them about those things. And uh, everything I loved about Celebrity Poker Showdown, which was people I knew from television or movies or music playing a game that I loved. The idea was to take both of those things, get rid of the stuff that I thought was lame, and replace the poker game with nerdy tabletop board games, like Settlers of Catan, or Ticket to Ride, or Dungeons and Dragons, or, uh, 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 or Alhambra, or uh, uh, Carcassonne, or just really fun, uh, modern, uh, uh, like nerd-style board games. And my ulterior motive with the show is to demonstrate by example why I love gaming, why I'm a gamer. I've been a super gamer since I was 14. I, I read my first Dungeons and Dragons book and I rolled my first character when I was 12 years old. Uh, my uh, thank you. Um, my my wizard Gandalf did not make it past the second encounter of Keep on the Borderlands. Uh, you kids today with your healing surges have no idea how good you are. And there's nothing in the world. I mean, there's a lot of things that make me a geek, and there's a lot of things that I am geeky for, but there is nothing in the world that brings me as much joy or is as fundamental to who I am as a, as a human being and as a geek as gaming. So I wanted to produce a show that would show by example why gaming is amazing, why gamers are great people, why gamers are not these antisocial weirdos who can't make eye contact with you when they talk to you, why we're not the caricature that we are often portrayed as uh, by mainstream media that can't be bothered to get past the stereotype to see who we really are. The result of that is my show, Tabletop. And I love it, and I'm really super proud of it, and I hope that you will uh, watch it. There are, I think, seven or eight episodes online now. There will be 20 by the time the, the year is over. One of the games we played was this game called Ticket to Ride. It's a really fun game where you're trying to connect trains across the continent of North America and complete routes 
uh, that other people can't complete uh, by collecting sets of cards. And uh, it's a really fun, really uh, uh, casual, entry-level game for, uh, for board gamers. So that's one of the reasons I chose it for the show. Um, my friend Shane Nickerson, who is one of the co-creators of uh, uh, Rob Gerdick's Fantasy Factory and was one of the executive producers on Rob and Big, was supposed to come down and play on tabletop. He couldn't play one day, so I called my wife in a panic from the set the night before and I said, can you come play Ticket to Ride tomorrow? Shane can't play. Knowing that she was going to say no, and she said, sure, I'll do that. Yeah. And I was like, awesome. I called after she had her glass of wine. <laughs> Good story. So we, uh, so she came over and she played the, she played Ticket to Ride. It was me, my friend Colin Ferguson, who plays Sheriff Carter, and, uh, and, uh, and, uh, and my friend Amy, who works at my comic book shop. And uh, as the show was over, when the game was over, we played the game for an hour and a half. And when we were done playing the game, we were counting up the trains to see what the score was. Uh, Anne was talking to Colin. And Anne and Colin are our friends in real life. And I was talking to Colin, and uh, at the end of, of, of telling the story that she was telling, to punctuate the story, and hit the table, and bounced the table, and 220 little plastic trains went everywhere. <laughs> and you can see it, it's on the internet, I mean, it's been shift. you can see it online, you can see us like this go... <laughs> I just stand up and go, what did you do? That... Anyway, it wasn't the end of the world. They put the trains back together. And it was actually really funny. We can laugh about it now. Uh, but you know what I really loved about it was that it sort of showed the world the relationship that I have with Anne. It showed the world why she is awesome. It showed the world why I love her as much as I do. And uh, she has fans. <laughs> Which is super weird to both of us. But there are, there are people who love her. She's really funny. She's on Twitter and she's super funny. And and uh, uh, I a lot of people when when they find out that I'm going to a con, they're like, "That's great. Is Anne coming?" <laughs> really? <laughs> Thirty-two fucking years of acting and you care about my wife who's in one show? <laughs> Like, I'm Metallica and she's Justin Bieber. Like, it's not... Actually, I'm not Metallica because I don't believe in treating my customers like they're criminals. So I take that back. I'm Rush. And she's another man that's not as good as Rush. And I'm not pandering to Canada. I love Rush. Can I tell you how excited I was to fly into YYZ last night? Oh, what Seamus looks like in So this is our dog, Seamus. Aww. Aww, right? <laughs> nice dog. Um, but I thought that it would be fun to share with you a story um, from, uh, from a, a thing that happened with us, sort of as an example of um, like uh, who we are, what our relationship is, and uh, give you a, a, a sense of uh, why I uh, why I adore her. So these are two stories that I told at the Woodstock Founders Night in San Francisco. Um, and uh, they sort of tell you everything you need to know about us.